Hello, I'm Sergeis and welcome to the last part of Mesh to HRDF version 1 tutorial. In this video we get our fresh HRDF sofa files and wrap things up. We go straight to the point, because there is not much to it. I assume you already finished your simulation, so if you rerun NumCog Manager, it will show you that all your projects are already complete and there is nothing more to run. So then we have our two project folders, which we can simply drag and drop into a finalized HRTF simulation folder. Step two is you go into this folder and you double click finalize HRTF simulation.py file. As you can see, I launched it and it shows me that it's now running post-processing for the first project, the left side. It will take just a few seconds. Then it launches the same thing for the right side. These printouts here are from the main mesh HRTF post-processing, while the printouts in between, which you can see here with these lines, are from the finalized script. Then it did the merging and it says saving of multi-sampling rate sofa files is also done. And everything is saved to this path, which is right here. Now it also finished plotting diagnostic plots and we're done. Hit enter to close. That's it. And here is your new folder where you have all your sofa files, HRIR files for 44.1 kilohertz and also 48,000 hertz. As you can see, we simulated two different evaluation grids. One is for ARI and one result is for the default evaluation grid. Now it's a good time to check, at least visually, some of the image files. So. Here is a plot for HRIR 44.1 kilohertz. And for example, this plot I prefer myself to look at. If you see something like this, then it looks like the data is correct. This is the expected pattern you should see in a SOFA file. So that's it. The simulation is complete. And now I will go back to the written tutorial to show you some more details about post-processing. As you can see, there are multiple ways to run post-processing. First of all, the official post-processing code is inside output to hrtfpy files. Effectively, there is a whole mesh to hrtfpy from API, which are welcome to read through and see all the additional features it offers. But as you saw, you don't really need to know anything about it. If you are using a finalized HRTF simulation PI script, it does everything for you. In addition, there is MATLAB code, which does about the same thing as the official post-processing code. This MATLAB version I would only recommend to people who are really familiar with MATLAB and have a good reason to use it. MATLAB code is currently missing a few features which you will find in Python post-processing but perhaps it's already as good as Python version when you're watching this video. Then here's a section about generating HRDF SOFA file and you already saw what we just did. We moved the project folders into the folder together with finalized HRDF simulation PI file and we ran it. Of course, I did it the easy way because I used a direct Python installation but if you are using Linux, Mac, or for example, Anaconda installations of Python, then you would perhaps need to run the same thing from command line, or perhaps you can drag and drop a file into Spider editor or some other Python editor to run the same thing in the right Python environment. And when the simulation is done, you get a number of files out where most importantly are the HRIR files for a specific sampling rate. You get SOFA files with multiple sampling rates only in case you had the correct settings for the simulation project. But if you follow this tutorial, this is what you're going to see. 
Here is an example of a good HRDF simulation result. For troubleshooting, if you checked your plots and they look good, but your program does not accept your SOFA file, chances are there is a bug in the software, or perhaps that software does not support this specific variant of the SOFA format. Even though SOFA format is standardized, there are various conventions and ways to store data inside SOFA files, which means that not all software works with all SOFA files. Mesh to HRDF SOFA files are made to be as similar as possible to the RE database SOFA files, which I would consider de facto reference format. Most software written to support SOFA files will work with RE HRDF database files. So in case you are wondering if your simulated SOFA file is okay, try to download one of these files and uh, it should work the same, both with the downloaded file and the mesh to HRDF simulated file. Second thing is, if you see some sort of error or problem printouts when running finalized HRDF simulation script, these are usually symptoms of some of the numcalc simulation problems which you have missed. So it's a good idea to go back to a simulation troubleshooting, perhaps a rerun numcalc manager, and check the log files out of the simulation instances. Then if you do encounter a crash of a finalized HRDF simulation script or any part of the Python post-processing, then it's most likely a bug. Please report these issues while providing the details of which printouts did you see just before it crashed. Again, this is only in case there is an actual bug, so hopefully you will never need to do this. So what if you want more flexibility? First of all, finalized HRDF simulation PyScript is made specifically for HRDF simulations, and it does have some advanced command line arguments which can be used, but for most advanced users, you probably would like to learn about mesh to HRDF Python API to access all the features of a Python post-processing and perhaps write your own scripts to make post-processing exactly as you want it. It's good to know that most software which supports SOFA files actually expects HRIR SOFA files, not the HRTF files which are also generated by mesh to HRTF. This is just a naming issue, but effectively they both contain about the same information. Also, it's good to know that these SOFA files expect completely flat headphone response on input. As you probably know, normal headphones are not flat. They have their own specific target frequency response, which needs to be compensated if they are going to be used together with these SOFA files. If you would like to learn more about how to use SOFA files, you could check out the SOFA application notes, also in the Mesh to HRTF wiki. But remember, this is outside of the scope of a main project, so you may as well find better information elsewhere. So from Mesh to HRTF project perspective, this is it. Now you have the HRTF SOFA files, and you are free to use them in any software which supports the standard. I hope that these videos and written tutorials gave you the confidence that simulating an HRTF is neither too hard nor too time-consuming. This tutorial became so long mostly because it includes various troubleshooting examples and details that you will hopefully not need at all. Of course, we all get errors when simulating HRTFs, because we are preparing unique 3D mesh and there are always possibilities to mistype or forget something but you can always jump into the right videos or troubleshooting sections so that in most cases you will resolve any issues faster than you can ask for help online. This concludes the basic Mesh to HRTF version 1 tutorial and I hope you will enjoy your new HRTF. If Mesh to HRTF was useful or perhaps not useful to you, just leave a comment about your experiences, any additional tips or what do you use Mesh to HRTF for? In any case, best of luck to you.